Hey there, it's Brie, and this is part two of my favorite adult contemporary romance series. So I am going to continue now with the rest of my favorite adult contemporary romance series. Please do watch the first part of this series because it has all the rest of my favorites. And let's jump back into this. Next is another one of my favorite series. And I think I'm so obsessed with it because I am deeply obsessed with, I think, the third book in this series. But the rest of the books in the series are really good too. However, I am like over the moon obsessed with the third book. It is the True North series by Serena Bowen. It's a series that follows this family that lives on this, I don't know, I guess it's considered a farm, but they have like an apple orchard and they make cider. The first book in the series follows the oldest brother who is kind of in charge of this farm ever since his father passed away and if you like like the farm type of romances I, that I'm sure that's a thing especially where everyone kind of works the land and it's a family that all works together and they make their own food and if you like familial books you'll like this one because they have a very strong family and each of the characters in that family I'm pretty sure each get their own story including some of the characters that are not part of the family but they live on the farm with them or at least work the farm with them they get their own stories definitely have to read this in order because I feel like you understand the characters and appreciate the characters a little more when you read it in order so the first book like I said is about the oldest brother who had big dreams of doing other things he didn't always want to work on the farm but then his father passed away and he kind of had to take it over and he is very interested in the chemistry behind making cider and that that's a big part of it like the making of the cider is a big part of it and even though that's not something I'm necessarily interested in I was interested in it for this book and I thought it was really interesting how much thought was obviously put into this when she was writing this book and it's also kind of an enemies to lovers type situation you have like the city girl and then the farm boy kind of and I think it's a second chance romance because if I remember correctly I've only read this book once if I remember correctly the heroine knew him in high school or college or something I can't really remember but it's one of those situations where she I think kind of gets stranded on his farm or something and I think she's a sales rep for a company and she's trying to like sell him things or something but anyway the first book's really really good I really like the second book as well the second book has trigger warnings though because it deals with addiction and I don't know from experience if it's very good representation for addiction but it seemed like it was it seemed super super intense that one also is a second chance romance very very good but let me tell you the third book in the series Zachariah's story oh I can't like I cannot handle how obsessed I am with Zachariah's story because it's a virgin hero. It, it was his book and Archer's voice that made me fall in love with the virgin hero trope because he's just so sweet and innocent and like a little bit naive because he had escaped from a cult, which I know sounds really weird, but he escaped from a cult. So he's kind of experiencing everything for the first time and has this wonder about him as he's experiencing these things. And I just, my heart and soul can't handle it. And I really feel like you really do need to read the first two books to truly appreciate Zachariah's book because he's in all of those books and just getting to know him in the background, I was obsessed with him. And then hearing his story, <sighs> so good. It's so good, you guys. Read the series. It's so good. And the rest of the books in the series are really good too, but I just, I've reread Zachariah's book like four times. I just, I can't. It's so good. So the next series I'm going to talk about, I'm actually going to hold up the second book because for some reason I couldn't find my copy of the first book in the series, which was interesting. The Kiss Quotient series. This is The Bride Test. It's book number two. It's by Helen Huang. The third book was supposed to come out this year, but then it was pushed back and it's killing me because it's about a character that I'm obsessed with already and I have very high hopes for it. This book was actually my favorite in the series. Um, the hero in this is Neurodivergent. I'm pretty sure he is on the spectrum. And then in the first book, the heroine is the one on the spectrum. It is also Own Voices. So the first book, The Kiss Quotient, if you somehow haven't heard of it, The Kiss Quotient is a male escort romance. So the heroine is on the spectrum, like I said, and she doesn't like being touched and she's trying to kind of get over that. And so she, and she's also a very successful woman, which I think is awesome. 
but she ends up hiring a male escort to help her kind of get through it. And he has a brother who is the hero in this, the brother, who is also on the spectrum. So he really gets it and he understands her and he really works with her. And then it's their romance and it's so freaking good and it's steamy and I love it. And then this book, like I said, is about the brother. This is a mail order bride arranged marriage romance and it's amazing. It's so freaking good. This has a lot of tropes in it that I love that I can't really say without spoiling the book, but like read it and then you'll probably understand why I love it so much. Love the series so much. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the third book, and I think it's his cousin, it's their cousin who it's about. And I'm, I love him. I love him in this book and I need his story like now, like right now. All right. Where are we at now? Okay. So this next series I'm going to share with you is actually a duet and or duology. I never know if you'd call it a duet or duology. It's a novella duet or duology. And it is Hearts in Darkness by Laura Kay. Very, very short book. You can read this in one sitting. The audiobooks are fantastic. This is one of the best instances of insta-love that I've ever read. Fantastic anxiety rep. One of the best meet cutes of all time. The whole story revolves around this couple who meet in an elevator that get stuck but they never actually see each other because they kind of are she's rushing getting in and they never really get a good look at each other and then the lights go out and they get stuck in the elevator for hours and it's just them like talking and through conversation building this chemistry and attraction to each other and there is so much sexual tension it is palpable in this book. And then the second book I feel like is just as good, but it dives a little bit deeper into the anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder situation in it. So good. Laura Kay writes Broken Heroes, probably the best out of anyone I've ever read. Okay, so I have another series by Helena Hunting on here. It is the Shacking Up series. I love this series so much. So I think I probably liked the Pucked series more, but then the more I think about the heroes in Shacking Up, I'm like, do I though? <laughs> so this series... I've only read once and I really need to go back and reread them because anytime I think about the think about the series, I get this like feeling of giddiness, even though the plot points are kind of vague for me right now. I do know that I think it's the first book. I feel like I read these books out of order and now I don't really remember like the actual order that it's supposed to be in. I feel like I need to look this up. Hold on. Shacking up. So the first book in the series, Shacking Up, is about this girl named Ruby and she is looking for a place to live and I think it's her sister that tells her about this like gig where she can live in this like penthouse taking care of this rich guy's exotic pets <laughs> and it's as funny as you would imagine so she can stay here stay there while she's looking for a place to live taking care of his pets and it's a romance between her and the rich guy that owns the penthouse and like the pets play a big part like there's a tarantula like it's it's actually quite adorable so if you like guys who like pets then you'll probably really like this one. This one, again, gave me so many butterflies. It was so sweet, but I read the series out of order because I didn't realize they were part of a series. So I actually read the second book first. And I actually, there are multiple books in the series and I think I've only read the first two. Hold on, let me see. Oh no, I read three books in the series. I didn't love the third book in the series, I Flipping Love You. It's about, it's a house flipping romance. I didn't love it. I think I gave it like three or four stars, but I did really like the first and the second book. There's a novella or there's a 0.5 in the series called Getting Down that I haven't read yet but I did read Hooking Up and that's actually the one that I read first. I loved this one strictly because of one scene in it. It's okay. This is kind of like a second chance romance romance situation. I loved the hero in this so much. So it's about a woman who ends up marrying this guy who's like super rich and everything and he ends up cheating on her at the wedding. Like he's been cheating on her for a while, but he gets caught cheating on her at the wedding like they're in the middle of their wedding and they each have like, I guess, lapel microphones on because they're going to give speeches. And he's like in the back getting it on with a bridesmaid or someone who's at the wedding or something and everyone hears it. And so she loses her ever loving mind. And she had this encounter with his brother a while ago. It ended up not turning into anything because the guy that she ended up marrying, his brother, warned her off of him and was like, listen, you don't want to be with that guy. He's a player, you know, and she was so grateful that he saved her from him. But anyway, so she she is in a complete tizzy and lost her mind and gets super rip roaring drunk after this happens at her wedding that she finds the brother that she originally met and ends up basically like throwing herself on him. 
(laughs) And that whole scene just like makes the whole book because he's just like, he's kind of had a thing for her this whole time. So he's fighting with himself like, oh my God, do I continue this? Do I stop her? But also I kind of like this. And she's just like going at him and it's like, it's so good. It's so good, you guys. And I love him so much because he's a little bit quirky. So he's super rich and wealthy too. I, want, I keep wanting to say misunderstood. It's not that he's misunderstood. It's just people think that he's a playboy, but he's not really. Like it's just a persona that people think, but he's got like this quirkiness about him, like the way he dresses and stuff. And I just love him. And now I want to reread it. This is the problem with me doing rec videos is that I start talking about these books that I love. And then I, as I'm talking about them, I remember why I love them and then I want to read them again and now I'm not going to get to my TBR because of this video because I'm just going to keep rereading my favorites. I've just wanted to comfort myself and I've been doing that by rereading books. Anyway, moving on. Ooh, ooh, this is a good series. I get so excited about it. So this series is another like rom-com laugh out loud series. It is very, very steamy, but so freaking funny. And this first book is my second favorite in the series. I actually like the novella in the series the best. This is the first book, Wrong. The book Fling, and I think it's book 1.2 or 2.5. I can't remember. Fling is my favorite book in the series and it's just a novella. It is so good. Jana Aston writes cringy moments like nobody else. Cringy moment. And when I say cringy moments, I don't mean like ew moments. I mean like embarrassing to the point where you're just like so embarrassed for them that you feel yourself getting flustered. <laughs> like she writes embarrassing moments. So good. Like I had to, I was reading this book and one of the scenes happened and I was just like, oh my God. Like I couldn't handle my life reading this book, but it was so, so good. This book, I feel like the beginning of the book was a lot better than the ending because the hero wasn't how I wanted him to be. He was much more alpha and very Dom-like more than I wanted. I guess that's how I would say it. Like I was expecting him to be much more stoic. So there is an age gap in this as well. The hero is a successful man who like comes into the heroine's cafe. She works at this cafe. I think it's called Grind Me, which is hilarious, but she is a college student. And he comes in to the cafe like every day and she just ogles him all the time like she fantasizes about him kind of obsessed with him and they don't have like a banter or anything because he's kind of like intense there's something happening between them but she could just be making it up in her head type of situation and if you like the kind of alpha controlling dom type of hero then you'll really like this one but like i said fling is really good i read all the other books in the series and i really liked them but this book and fling are definitely my favorite oh and the series follows i think they're like friends i think like her roommate is in one and then like his friend is in one maybe a brother or something so it's not like a tight-knit group that it follows but it's people who are vaguely like have to do with each other so the next two series i'm going to talk about are kind of spin-offs of each other they like intertwine a little bit They are written by Penny Reed. It is the Winston Brothers series as well as the Knitting in the City series. I would recommend reading Knitting in the City series first and then moving on to Winston Brothers because there are overlapping books toward the end. There's a book that overlaps between the Winston Brothers series. So if you had to read them in order, read that first. These are books that I feel like can be read out of order. Both series I think can be read out of order if you really wanted to. I read them in order and I like them. So the first book in the Knitting in the City series is one of my favorites and then also one of the middle books. Here's the thing about the series. There's like 8,000 books in the series. Not really, but there's a lot. It took me a very long time to finish it because they were just so freaking many and I can get a little burnt out on Penny Reed's writing to be honest. She has a very distinct way of writing and it gets on my nerves sometimes. So I have to take it kind of in small doses, but I loved this first book in the series. So the entire series follows this group of women who knit and they have like a little knitting club and I think that's so freaking adorable and it's such a great premise and it's each of their romances and the first one is kind of like a almost a bodyguard-ish type romance and it has like a stoic hero in it and a very quirky heroine. I'm trying to figure out where Is it Love Hacked? That's my favorite. Okay, yes. So book number three is my favorite book in the series. It's called Love Hacked. This is an age gap romance and it's about a woman who she's a psychotherapist and then the hero is very quirky. He's extremely quirky and I loved that about him. Like he's very secretive and he has a lot to do with like Bitcoin 
And I think he, is he a hacker of some sort? He's like a hacker of some sort. But what's interesting is I learned a lot about Bitcoin in this book, like more than I ever knew before. I never really understood what Bitcoin was, but I learned a lot about it in this book. That's one thing that Penny Reed does really well is she thoroughly researches her hero and heroine's like jobs so that she can get pretty in depth about it. And they all have very unique jobs, which is very cool. The Winston Brothers series, the first book in the series, which is Truth or Beard, is my freaking favorite. I'm obsessed with it because it has a hero with so much longing. Like he has loved this girl for the longest time. And oh my God, now I want to read it. This is the problem. I'm telling you, I keep wanting to read all these books. So good. I have not finished that series yet. I've read the first three books. Most people like, I think it's the third book. I think most people like the third book in the series because it's Cletus's book. And Cletus is one of the Winston brothers who is just very quirky. He's quirky and he's weird and he's hilarious. So the way that this is linked is one of the heroines in Knitting in the City series, the Winston brothers are her brothers. So it kind of spins off into their romances, but it can, continues following the girls or the people who are in this knitting group. Two very great series by Penny Reed. Again, her writing is good, but very distinct and gets on my nerves sometimes. Ooh, ooh, I love this next series too. Wait, but is this my favorite? <laughs> I can never decide. I don't, okay, this is, it's just, it's just a favorite. It's not my favorite. It is the Marked Men series by Jay Crownover. This one is the first book in the series, Rule. I don't think this series needs to be read in order. I read it in order, but I don't think you would need to because it doesn't overlap enough. Like the storylines don't overlap enough, if I remember correctly, for them to need to be read in order but you won't like hate your life reading these in order because this was my favorite book in the series. So it's not like you have to try and get to my favorite book. This is a series that follows the marked men. It's a tattoo parlor. So it's all the guys who work in the tattoo parlor. And also I think like a couple of people who just have to do with the tattoo parlor. So this one is a, not really a second chance romance. It's a best friend's brother romance. And it's, it's actually something that I didn't think that I would necessarily like, but it's a heroine who has been kind of pining after the hero for a long time, and he's never really given her the time of day because she's been best friends with his twin brother, and he always thought that they were together, like their entire family always thought they were together, but they weren't. Sorry, my headband is like losing its mind. Okay. But they weren't ever really together, her and his twin brother, so he never really gave her the time of day and she never really pursued him and then until things kind of come to a head and it's just so good like he's kind of the bad boy playboy everyone loves him and she seems like she's much more like stuffy and kind of stuck up a little bit she comes from a very wealthy family her family is also kind of horrible so in this series, you have a lot of different tropes, like there's a guy who's in the military, there's a guy who used to be like a criminal, there's a guy who's in a band, and all of her books tend to, and especially in this series, they all tend to have some like action-y type parts in them, like not like kind of low-key, like it's not out of control, but there's a little bit of action-y or like a lot of drama in her books, not necessarily emotional, but like a lot of stuff happening. But this was a very entertaining series and I feel like it doesn't get enough love and I love it. So this next series, I'm actually going to hold up the second book in the series because it is my favorite. It is the Royally series by Emma Chase. This is Royally Matched. It is my favorite book in the series. I am obsessed with this book. Another one I want to reread. So I don't like royal books typically. Like I don't like books that follow royalty, especially modern day royalty because I just, it's just not my thing. I did really, really enjoy this. The first book I think I ended, I think I gave four stars. I really liked it, but it wasn't anything like mind blowing. This book cover was so good and it's everything that I would think that I would hate because it has to do with a reality TV show and I typically hate reality TV shows. Like I hate reality TV in general, but I really don't want to read about it. However, this was done really well and I think it's because of the heroine. She's very bookish and relatable. I loved her and the hero in this together. This series follows a royal family. The first two books follow the brother and then the third book follows the guard of, I think, the sister. It's like the sister and her guard. So it's a bodyguard romance. It's so good. It's so good, you guys. Like, I was so surprised by how much I liked this series because, again, I don't typically like royal series that are set in contemporary times, but this one.
one was really, really good. Emma Chase also is really good at writing like kind of, I wouldn't necessarily call them rom-coms, but they're much more um, lighthearted. They're not super emotional or anything, but still very good. We're getting to the end finally, people, and that's good because I'm losing my voice. Three more series to talk about. Next is Full Tilt. This is actually a duet. It is written by Emma Chase. Nope. It is written by Emma Scott, not to be confused with Emma Chase, who I just talked about. So the Full Tilt series is a very emotional series. You absolutely have got to read these in order. Do not even read the synopsis of the second book before reading this book because it will absolutely spoil you. You need to read these in order and you need to read both of them. Like, I am telling you, you cannot read just the first book because you will not be happy if you only read the first book, but it's so, so good. So this series follows a girl who is in a rock band and they're just starting to become successful, but she was kicked out of her house and still kind of harbors a lot of pain from being kicked out of her house and she like misses her parents, but like it seems like her parents just don't care about her at all. And she has a lot of issues. There is definitely trigger warnings for addiction in this and for illness. There's caretaking in this book, which is really great because the heroine is, like I said, in this rock band and the hero drives a limo for this company. He also has a heart condition and he has to take like a lot of medication and everything, but he ends up caretaking for her in the beginning because she ends up getting completely wasted after a show one night and her bodyguard ends up like throwing her into his limo, which he's the one who's supposed to drive everyone home, but he's like, take care of her, take her home, whatever. And so he drives her and is about to take her home, but there's some shady stuff going on at her house. So he ends up taking her back to his house. And then she like wakes up there and that's kind of how they first meet. Such a great meet cue. It's an intense book. Their romance is a whirlwind epic romance. It is heartwarming, heartbreaking, beautiful. It was so, so good. But I'm telling you, the second book in this series is my all-time favorite. There were so many tension-filled, glorious, like butterfly-inducing moments in that second book, and I did not think it could top the first book, but it freaking did. It's so good. This duet is epic. And next is a series that I am not sure will ever be finished. There are only two books in it, and I am dying for the rest. It is the Ariel Ethereal series by Kristen Becca Ritchie. It is a series that follows this like Cirque du Soleil inspired performers. And so they all do like Cirque du Soleil kind of gymnastics y dancing, like artistic performances. And in the first book, which I really like the first book, but the second book is my favorite. It ultimately follows this Russian family who has been involved with Ariel Ethereal, which again is like Cirque du Soleil for their entire lives. And it's a big family. And the first book is about the oldest brother. I think he's the oldest brother, is he? He's the brother that like kind of takes care of his siblings the most. And he is the best performer in this whole like group. And the heroine is someone who has wanted to do that for her entire life like she's wanted to join Ariel Ethereal for her entire life and he is like the one barrier standing between her and her dreams and they end up having to perform together and everything so that's great it's just it's really great and it's very atmospheric but it's the second book that I'm obsessed with because it's a forbidden romance and there's so much tension between the two characters and the hero he's very charismatic and outwardly seems like this kind of irreverent type hero but he is dealing with a lot of really difficult things he has an eating disorder so trigger warnings for that he also is a kleptomaniac it's intense like surprisingly intense but so so good and it breaks my heart that they have no intention of finishing the series it like kills me honestly and then last but not least is a series that I have not finished yet because I only recently discovered that there is a third book in the series. There may be even more books in the series, but is the Grip series by Kennedy Ryan. I only recently read the prequel in this and I'm like killing myself because you have got to read this series in order and I did not. (laughs) So I ended up reading Grip before I read Flow, which was a mistake because Flow is how the couple in Grip meet and end up falling in love and that's pretty important. I still really liked Grip when I read it but I love it now that I have read Flo. This is an interracial romance between a rapper and a very wealthy woman and the hero in it is best friends with the woman's brother. That's how they end up meeting. He picks her up from the airport for his friend and they end up kind of spending the day together because his friend is like working and she's waiting for him 
and they spend the day together and they just have a ton of chemistry. When they meet in Flow, he is not yet a famous rapper, but then when you get to Grip, it's like five or six years later and he has kind of climbed the ranks and worked his way up to becoming a very famous rapper. So you kind of see that progression and she is his manager at that point and they do have this history and everything and it's just... It's so good. It's so swoony. If you want butterflies when you read, read this series. It's so freaking good. It's my favorite by Kennedy Ryan so far, and I'm obsessed. <laughs> All right, guys, I am officially losing my voice. I have been talking for well over an hour. I hope you enjoyed these recs. I hope you find something new and wonderful to read. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books before and what you thought of them, or let me know some of your favorite contemporary romance series. There are a lot that I left off this list, but it's mostly because I either didn't love all the books in the series or I only read like one book in the series and I felt like I couldn't recommend the whole series <laughs> yet so I definitely there are some things glaringly missing from this list but maybe eventually I will do another part to this roundup and add some of my newer favorite series that I love. Alright guys thank you so much for watching and as always happy reading.